Hello everyone, here's a bunch of news for you today. Xbox Game Pass just tweeted out this image of The Mandalorian with the caption, We're not posting this for no reason. And now everyone's falling into a spin that The Mandalorian is going to get a game exclusive to Xbox Game Pass. Well, not everyone, some people think there's not going to be a Mandalorian game, but rather that the tweet relates to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is going to hit Xbox Game Pass on November 10th. And they could be right. It was only two weeks ago when it was revealed Mandalorian-themed tie-ins to existing video games were going to be a thing, including Mandalorian-based updates to Star Wars Squadrons, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, The Sims Free Play, Star Wars The Old Republic, and even Star Wars Pinball. So it's not inconceivable that something to do with The Mandalorian could be added to the Xbox release of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Be that as it may, until we know for sure what this is all about, I'm going to sit quietly here and imagine that what we're really getting is a new Mandalorian game. That sounds much cooler to me than getting a baby Yoda bobblehead for the Stinger Mantis. Or something like Hasbro's animatronic, which is supposed to be cute. Hmm. Moving on, Bluepoint have released more Demon Souls gameplay via PlayStation's State of Play. The new video shows us our first glimpse at the character creator, which the dev state offers you thousands of permutations to create your ideal look. There's a fair bit of narrated gameplay revealed too, with over 10 minutes to enjoy. We also get our first look at the remade Dirty Colossus boss, which looks and sounds amazing. Now it seems lately we're hearing a lot about games on the PS5 that won't be running at native 4K if you want to experience 60 frames a second. Gavin Moore, the creative director of Demon's Souls, also confirmed that that's no different for Demon's Souls itself. The game won't run at 60 frames per second in native 4K. It will only run at 60 frames per second in dynamic 4K. That means the game will modify its resolution dynamically to maintain 60 frames per second, which essentially means it will likely hit 4K when not much is happening and will upscale from a lower resolution when there is a lot of action on the screen. Some people like me will almost certainly notice the difference between true and upscaled 4K, but I think most people probably won't. We don't know how much upscaling is going to occur either, but in the end, if it really bothers you, you'll have to settle for the cinematic option, which will definitely run at native 4K, albeit at 30 frames per second. Next up, Bioware have confirmed a remastered version of all three Mass Effect games is coming. It too is going to be in 4K, though I don't know if it's going to be dynamic or native. To get them, you'll need to buy the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which will include 2007's Mass Effect, 2010's Mass Effect 2, and 2012's Mass Effect 3, but it won't include 2017's Mass Effect Andromeda. Expect the Legendary Edition to drop on consoles, both current gen and next gen, as well as on PC, somewhere between March and May of 2021. In addition to these remasters, Bioware also confirmed a new Mass Effect game is in the early stages of development. There's no other news about what the game is actually about, but the image you're looking at here is believed to be concept art from the game. Check this out, this is Razer's Cyberpunk 2077 themed version of their Razer Viper Ultimate Gaming Mouse. You can only get this mouse and the dock, you have to get the dock, it's not optional, through the Razer store right now and the price of it's not really that much different to an entire Xbox Series S. So yeah, expect to pay through the nose for it. But it's pretty cool. In my last update, I mentioned Square Enix posted a large second quarter loss of 63 million, or 48 million if you only look at their digital entertainment loss. And we probably should only really look at that since Marvel's Avengers was a big factor of that. In the previous update, I mentioned it was speculated that Avengers cost Square Enix 100 million to make. The actual figure still remains a mystery, but some industry experts are now reassessing what they think it cost for the game to be made to 170 to 190 million dollars, which means with only 3 million in sales, Marvel's Avengers is a much bigger flop than we originally assumed. 
A lot is going to be riding on their future updates to try and turn it around, that's for sure. It's now been confirmed many games will have significantly smaller file sizes on the Xbox Series S than they will on the Xbox Series X. Season of Thieves will be a whopping 64% smaller, Dirt 5 will be 23% smaller, and Gears 5 will be 39% smaller. There's some wizardry going on there, that's for sure. Or, as Twitter user Alan Bradley laughed it up, Sea of Thieves will be 64% better on Series X, Dirt 5 will be 23% better, and Gears 5 will be 39% better on Series X. Funny as that is though, when someone like GameSpot posts a review of the Series S and the only words they can squeeze into their tweet are cute, compact and cheap, well maybe that joke isn't too far off the mark. Now I don't post kids games on my channel because, well, you run the risk of being put in shackles for doing that these days, but just the same you should know, the release of Private Division's Kerbal Space Program 2 has been delayed until 2022. KSP 2 will be on PC and consoles and even though it's rated for ages 3 and above, yes, 3, you heard that right. Anyway, I still say watch this space because from the rumors I'm hearing, Private Division have created a space flight sim that is going to blow people's minds, kids and adults alike. We'll find out in two years. And finally, I just completed playing Zhuan Wan Sword 7. I can tell you this game looks like Chinese Neo at first glance, but it's not anything like that. Think of it as a story game with tons of cutscenes and some basic combat in between solving some fairly well designed puzzles. Boss fights are pretty good for the most part, despite the combat being a bit shallow though. I did like most of the boss fights. In fact, I've posted most of the boss fights on my channel if you want to take a look for yourself. The game has a killer soundtrack and there's anything between 20 to 40 hours of gameplay depending on whether you rush through the main mission or do all side quests and farm to upgrade your gear to make yourself as tough as you can be. It's a double A game or maybe really just an A game, but it's still pretty good value for money all in all I thought. I did enjoy playing it all the way through and had enough fun, although you do have to get past the god awful optimization to do to have that fun. It ran at a stable 60 frames a second for me, but it did stutter the whole time. And this seems to be a universal problem across the board, so not just with my rig. Reviews are mixed, but I'd say it's a 6 or 7 out of 10. Some people might give it a 5, but really, what you'll rate it will depend on what you want to get out of it. If story is your thing, you might lean towards the 6 or 7. If combat's your thing, you probably won't go any more than a 5 or a 6. I'd say I'd lean more towards the 7 because I did get some fun out of it. I do think it was reasonable value for money. Anyway, maybe skip it if combat's your thing and wait for a special because, you know, it's probably worth picking up on a special for the boss fights alone. Anyway, that's my take on Zhuan Wan Sword 7, and that's it for this video. I hope there's been something in it of interest to you. Hope you liked it. If you did, chuck me a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.